Oh right, it is the time of the year all over again, and that is laptop season. So whether you are a seasoned professional looking to upgrade their workstation or a freshman coming into university for the first time, laptop is going to be a very important investment you'll have to make during your career. So in this video, we will first talk about whether you should get a laptop versus a desktop, and then we'll talk about the important specs that you should be looking out for, general tips and tricks for first time buyers, and then we'll go on to talk about Mac versus Windows, and last but not least, if you're looking for a specific recommendations from our community, then that will be at the end of this video. And there's a lot to cover, so let's dive right into it. Hey, by the way, did you know that there's a magical way to make our new videos show up on your feed? If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new videos. All right, let's go first things first. Should you get a laptop versus desktop? So if you already own a laptop, then it might be a good time to upgrade to a desktop, some, to something more powerful. But if you're first time getting a computer that's going to be seriously for architecture, then laptop is always the first step. The reason being is that laptop provides you with the much needed portability and flexibility. Even though if you compare like the amount of features and processing power that laptop gives you, desktop will definitely give you more features and performance per box but the laptop's portability is honestly something that you have to have. That's why you have to have even the underpowered laptops in the beginning. So keep this in mind when you're choosing your laptop, you know, even if you don't get the most decked out one right now, this one can be the one that you use to remote into your desktop later down the road. If all these laptops that we're gonna talk about are out of budget for you, then that's okay. But do keep in mind that you will eventually have to upgrade to another workstation eventually. Okay, so that being said, let's move on to the specs. So when it comes to laptops, there's a lot of jargons that fly around and it can like easily get you confused. Okay, specs to consider. Number one is CPU. CPU obviously is like the most important part of the computer. It's the central processing unit. This is a main workhorse that makes the calculations. So whether that be you're using a CAD program or Rhino, your computer eventually needs to do a lot of work through CPU. And my advice to you for CPU is that find the best one you can get within your budget. This will kind of determine the baseline performance for your laptop, even though there's a lot of things to consider such as like graphic card, RAM, and all that, but try to optimize for the best one. And just a quick disclaimer, I'm not an expert in this field either, so if you guys find any mistakes, then feel free to let us know in the comments. And if you're looking to buy a laptop, make sure to consult the comment section where people will be giving us more suggestions. So when we look at the minimum specs required for um, most programs that you'll be using, such as AutoCAD, SketchUp, Rhino, they recommend you have at least 2.4 GHz speed and quad-core processor. Quad-core means four processors, so that means it can process four um, calculations at the same time. So watch out for these numbers when you're on the hunt. So the second thing that you want to look for is the GPU. GPU is a graphics processing unit where CPU basically delegates all the graphic work to this graphics card. So graphics cards are designed to be more efficient at calculating a 2D and 3D graphics. This piece of hardware is probably the most important piece when you're rendering. We recommend you try to find NVIDIA or AMD processors. And unfortunately these days there's a lot of cryptocurrency mining happening so we have a global shortage of graphics card. But if you can find a high-end one, then definitely go for those. We generally recommend you go with NVIDIA's 2000 series or above and AMD's Radeon uh, graphics cards. Graphics cards with at least 4GB of VRAM. And the next up is RAM. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. It's like a temporary storage area for your computer. So this allows you to quickly and efficiently do multitasking. And that means you have to have a large amount of space here or sufficient amount of space here to run multiple softwares at the same time. And for this, we recommend at least eight gigabytes, but you'll quickly realize that eight gigabytes is really not enough. If you go to websites like Adobe and Rhino, they all generally recommend 16 gigabytes minimum to run their softwares smoothly. If you can get more, the merrier, but 16 gigabytes is what we recommend. Okay, when it comes to storage, there are generally two options. One is hard disk drive, and the other one is solid state drive. So hard disk drive is gonna be a little bit cheaper for the amount of storage, but it's gonna be a lot slower. And on the flip side, solid state drives are gonna be a lot faster, but a lot more expensive per storage. 
A common strategy to go around this is basically to use built-in solid state drive for your operating system and your program so that you can quickly write files and read files. Once you're done with a certain project, then you can offload all the project files into an external hard drive for longer term storage. And for that, we recommend you go with at least 250 gigabytes of space, but more is always better. And the next up is connectivity. By that, we mean how many ports and the kind of ports that your laptop will have. So this becomes really important because you would usually want to carry things around and plug things in, such as the external hard drive that we just talked about. Try to put these things into consideration. So if you are a photographer, you will likely transfer your files using a SD card. So you might want to check if your laptop has a SD card slot. And also, if you're going to be using a second monitor, then you should have a compatible port for that. And that usually comes in the form of USB-C or HDMI port. And that brings us to the next point, screen size. For screen sizes, there are probably around like three options, 17 inches, 15 or 14 inches, and smaller. And when it comes to screen sizes, we generally recommend 15 inches. The reason is because 17 inches quickly become extremely heavy and clunky to kind of carry around. All the benefits of portability of laptop kind of starts to fade away with 17 inches. And on the flip side, the 13 inches or smaller laptops tend to be a little bit underpowered. So it'll be difficult to find smaller laptops with the other performance that we want. And 15 inches tend to strike the right balance for architects because not only are they like, you know, the right size so that they fit into our backpack, but they also tend to have a decent amount of performance to carry out day-to-day -day tasks. Hey there, are you finding this video useful? Then make sure to hit that like button so that other people can see this video as well. If you have any suggestions for the recommendations that we're giving out, then make sure to leave it in the comments so that we can help other people out. Okay, so those are the most important metrics that we'll be looking out for when you're choosing a laptop. And let's move on to some specific recommendations that we have for you. Okay, so specific recommendations. In no particular order, these are some of the most popular laptops that were mentioned in our community. And by community, I mean our website, Instagram, and YouTube comment sections. In no particular order, let's begin. Okay, so the number one candidate that we have is Razer Blade 14 slash 15 inches. What's really cool about Razer Blade is that they have an amazing and beautifully designed laptops that are also powerhouses. Razer Blade is designed and produced by Alienware, which is famous for gaming products. So you can kind of expect that they will have a crazy amount of performance packed into it. And you'll be surprised how compact and beautiful that they're designed. And yeah, if you want to learn more about this, um, all the links are in the description. This article is available on our website, so you can flip through these options at your own leisure. Next up is Alienware M15R4. So again, this is another product from Alienware. This option is usually for people who are looking for more performance packed into a 15 inch laptop. This one is going to be a lot heavier and um, a lot thicker, so it loses out on a portability side. But we can assure you that this guy has much better ventilation as well as the overall performance benefits. But either way, both products are excellent options, both coming from reliable company. So we would generally recommend both. Okay, next one is Asus Zephyrus G14. So Asus has been releasing these amazing laptops um, since uh, several years ago. And what's really cool about these laptops is that they are known to be one of the most powerful laptop options you can get in the world. And one of the really particular thing about Zephyrus is that when you actually open up the lid, it actually becomes a bit of a hinge that like lifts the computer up so that it gets a better airflow. So this is something to consider, you know, if you're going for really hardcore graphic work, then this might be the best option for you. Okay, next one, another one from Asus. They have this like very characteristic or iconic hinge that like lifts the laptop up here as well. But what's even more interesting than that is probably the second screen that's on above the keyboard. You know, depending on how important screen real estate is for you, then this can be an interesting option. Honestly, like design itself is like so striking that like I would love to play around with this. And they come with an extremely decked out performance specs as well. There's an option to get i9 8 core processor and NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 GPU. So this is probably like the top of the line products that you can get right now. So if you want to go for this like peculiar look and deck out everything that you can possibly get, then this is probably the right option for you. Okay, so MSI has also been in our list for a really long time as well. 
we got a lot of recommendations for MSI as well. And next up is Lenovo's Legion 5 Pro. So this is the um, gaming laptop line for Lenovo. And the Legion line has been known to be a very durable and powerful laptop suitable for architectural graphic purpose. So if you're really into gaming or visualization, then this laptop will do you a great service. And one option that is not really mentioned in the list so far is the Dell XPS 15. This is a laptop that I've personally been using for the last four years and it's been serving me great. It's got a sleek appearance and decent amount of performance. You do have to pay a little bit more for, you know, like the form factor, but it tends to be very competitive with the other laptops that we've mentioned so far. If you want to pack in all the performance that you want, but also make things very portable, XPS 15 might be the right choice for you. I used to have a very big laptop before this one, and I found that after a long travel, my back was hurting. Ever since I got XPS 15, like my back pain has been gone. I'm not sure if that means the laptop is helping me out, but you know, either case, weight is one of the portability factors that you should be looking out for. Make sure to include this when you're comparing different laptops, and then your body will thank you. Okay, last but not least, MacBook Pro. And the reason it's here is because Mac OS is still widely used throughout the industry. Even though there's a lot of, um, a lot of debate about the compatibility issues, there are still a full stack of softwares that you can use on Mac OS. So for example, you know, ArchiCAD and Vectorworks are the prime BIM softwares used on Mac OS, and SketchUp works very well on Mac OS as well. Even though we don't necessarily recommend Mac PC as your first laptop, if you want to go for the better form factor, then this could be the option for you. If you are looking to just go for a MacBook that's the latest one, then you might be very, very disappointed. So you might have to go for a slightly older version of MacBook Pro. No matter what we say, if you're going to go for an Apple product, the only option really is MacBook Pro. But do keep in mind that the new M1 chip is incompatible with a lot of architectural software such as Rhino. Really have to watch out for that and go for a slightly older version with the older processor. Okay, so yeah, that's it for this video. How'd you guys find it so far? Did you guys find it useful? And let us know in the comments. And if you have additional comments or suggestions that we have, and if we got anything wrong, please do let us know in the comments so that we can inform others. So thanks for tuning in again today, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!